So, well, at, you, at this point, yeah, and, and like I think you're right because like I actually um, in 1991 and 92, I played in Japan. I got hired to do a 16 week residency um, at this park. This theme, it was a very strange place, and they you could only get a visa for three months, and we had to take a day off and go to the visa. The, the management company had to escort us, and the day before our visas ran out and they re- we had to renew our visas and they, because this management company was responsible for, for me, they literally, w- when our gig was over, they, they took us to the airport and walked us to the gate and watched us get on the plane because immigrate in, living in Japan, trying to stay there, immigrate there, get a work visa, whatever is so difficult. And, and they're so the government is so uptight about it that, if I were to stay and wasn't working for the management company anymore and then get in trouble, the management company would be responsible. Like if I were to get arrested or do something, whatever, there's not, there's not a lot of, um, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of street crime back then, but so I can understand like other countries are very tight with who they let in and out. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's different protocols and different situations, and uh, we are exactly. a land, land of a lot of people. So I'll tell you what, my friend JP Reality is my awesome guest on Humagoo. It is now four four twenty four Central Time. Are you East Coast? Aren't you out in Virginia? Way right East now? Coast? Yes. Yeah, Arlington. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's yes. go to the South Side DC. Uh, are you Redskins? I'm Packer Cheesehead. You know, I always got to talk a little bit of sports or something. Uh, who, who's your team? No. No, no, I, um, I, I was, I grew up uh, on Long Island in New York, and I was a New York Giant fan. Yeah, and because I've been playing music so much, um, I kind of, I, I'm, I'm usually not home on Sundays. Right, and it was really the truth is when the New York Giants won the Super Bowl in 1986 with Phil Simms and Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, I said that's enough. Because I was a fan when they were so bad in the seventies, <laughs> that uh, if they would get a first down against the Cowboys, I would be happy. I would consider that a victory. So, once they dominated the league for that one year, I I was satisfied. And then then I started playing professionally and was yeah, not around on Sundays. So, I don't watch much football and um, definitely not a Redskins fan. I can say that much. <laughs> I got you. Uh, I'm in cruise. Here we go, everybody. Thank you. We'll be right back. We've been fighting for so long. Everything all right is wrong. We just can't pretend no more. It's time we opened up the doors for all. Tired and poor, hungry folks from distant shores. So much land, there's room for more, and we don't need another Berlin Wall. I'm gonna pack my blues, I'm gonna tie my shoes, I can't refuse.
worst of all these endless wars has crucified our freedom at its core. You can stand your ground and fight. That don't always make you right. It don't matter day or night. The truth will always shine the bright. Pack my blues. I'm gonna tie my shoes. I can't refuse a highway cruise. I'm gonna pack my blues. I'm gonna tie my shoes. I can't refuse a highway cruise. Hit it. Love that, JP. That's some definite Almond Brothers sound, Southern Groove, my friend. Welcome back to the Humagoo. No buddy. doubt. Ah, thank you. We were just talking off air about all those great Southern influences that you have, uh, you know, Dwayne Almond and all that great stuff. And today, there's only one category in the Grammys. You were telling me. Yeah, it, you know, and, it, and it's really about the TV show that the Grammys. The Grammy Award ceremony is, yeah. and there's so so many categories that the, the whatever the network it was on ABC or CBS told them they had to reduce the length of the show. So what they did was they cut categories and they cut. There weren't that many blues categories. I think it was like best contemporary blues, best traditional blues, best blues male vocalist, best female blues vocalist, and maybe one more. But I, I'm pretty sure they cut it all down to just best blues album, which there is. There's a lot of people that get um, cut out, that get left out, that um, get cut out. Unfortunately, I mean, myself with my radio show that I started putting together, the music is all provided by promoters and Betsy Brown. Everything on my show is provided by artists. Or I hear the music you guys got, and it is the best. And I'm understanding why there isn't. More categories, radio stations around Milwaukee area playing this stuff. You know, I'm bl- I don't have enough time. This is a hobby, but it's so many people. My brother in law, you guys got to hear these tunes that these people are playing, and nobody would know. You know, yeah. through internet and stuff, and what you guys are producing out there. Um, it, I'm sorry, but the music today, I, I have to have an open mind, but we don't have the the things we grew up with. Um, the, you know, the songs that kind of carry in your head. I guess they do, but they carry in a manner of a, I don't know, a, a, theric, a lyric theme, I guess, in their heads, huh? Not musical, should I say. Well, with well, the yeah, the industry... Right, the industry has become... has become completely about the bottom line which which is making money for somebody else not necessarily the artist because even though all these famous 
musicians that we grew up listening to, the Who, the Allman Brothers. Yeah. Uh, um, the musicians made lots of money, but the record company made 10 times as much money. And so now it's even, in my opinion, more, more blatant than ever. There's still people out there like myself making good music, but mm -hmm. the record company has, this is what we're going to do for you. We think you're going to be good. We think, we, we think you're good. We think you're going to sell some records. We're going to give you a one de record deal. And if your record sells and we make money, will extend your contract. Nobody anymore gets a multiple album deal. It's you, you get one shot at it. If you fit the suit, so to speak, and it works in your record sales, then they'll give you money to uh, make another record and promote you some more. But it's no longer about the art at the highest level, like the big major label companies. Sure, you have some exceptions, but, um, I don't, I don't know how people get signed to a major deal anymore. I know when back in the eighties, you sent demo tapes out and you tried to get an A and R an A and R guy to come to one of your gigs, especially the music that I've always played. It's always been about playing live. Yeah. We, we try to write the best songs we can, but the style of music that I played blues and blues rock is about the live experience. Yeah. And it's, um, it's just a, I'm trying to be open minded about the hip hop and the rap and and that's kind of what they do. So you either have to go into yeah. that. But again, I'm just blessed and this is out here. So I just keep cranking the best I can. Your tunes and all these great blues artists, uh, buddy guy Tom Ambridge, my mind. Now that yeah. one, the independent blues, uh, Nola Sessions, and all that stuff coming from Betsy Brown, and then to hear your stuff, JP. Um, you know, it's just beginning of everything. For everybody, I mean, you keep it going. Yeah, well, you, well, thank you for doing what you do to keep it going, and that's part of why I do this. Um, I have no misgivings about uh, fame and fortune. I love this music. I'll be playing to the day I die. I play guitar every day, even if it's just for thirty seconds. If I'm traveling, or if I'm practicing, or if I'm playing a gig. Sometimes I play two gigs in a day. I'll do a morning gig and an afternoon gig, or something or afternoon and an evening. And I think that the greatest cultural contribution the United States of America has given the world is the music of the 20th century. Yeah. And my goal is to keep it alive and keep it going. And um, at the CD, my CD release show last week, um, it was at this coffee shop uh, music venue. It turned into a music venue at night. And but they also sell homemade gelato and people mm -hmm. were coming in off the street to buy an ice cream and coming and sitting down and going, Hey, this guy's good. Let's <laughs> sit for a little while and listen to that. And that's the whole idea. Like, Hey, listen, get, there's good music out there. Go out and see live music. You don't have to just get on one of these streaming services and pay $10 a month for them to tell you what songs you should listen to. Get out, use your, Use your, 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 your mind and support local artists in your community and remember that people are out there still making quality music. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that, you're in the D.C. area. And that comes to our next tune a little bit, too. We're going to play Blues for Casey. <laughs> that, that's right. kind of a, a little bit about our, uh, our guy up there in the, the White House, should I say, and uh, working on the White House Blues. Same stuff on the yeah, that, way. That's a whole different vibe up there, I imagine, huh? Yeah, it's a whole different vibe, and, and it's kind of funny. My last album um, the, was called The Road to Mississippi. Yeah. That Betsy Brown also did the promo for. Um, it got reviewed by a blues... From, I don't remember if it was a magazine or a blues society in Florida, and the reviewer criticized me for not mm. writing more politically charged songs, and I have always thought that entertainers should entertain and politicians should do their jobs as well. And I'll offer my opinion to someone, but I, I rarely do so from the stage when I'm performing because people are there to hear me play and sing, not right. tell me what the politics should be. But the situation that we're in, and, and um, this is not actually a comment on part.